Let's explore together, shall we? <laughs> hey friends, you caught me editing. Uh, this video got a bit too long, so I chopped it up in two. There will be a screen at the end of this one that will lead you to the other one. Um, might take a while before the other one is up there. Our internet on Bonaire is not very fast. So it might take a couple of minutes before the second one is here, okay? Hope to see you there. Bye-bye. Hello, Polymer friends. Welcome back to the studio. Welcome to Bonaire. It's a bit hazy today. And yeah, hazy today. A little bit of wind, but I think we're good. Ah. Uh, like I said, let's do some Mishima today. Uh, I've had people ask me, what's the difference between Mishima and Scrofito? Well, Scrofito is where you cover your um, piece before bisking with slip and or underglaze and then carve away the design. So you're carving away the negative space and then your design shows up and it reveals the gray color. With Mishima, you first make your design in your clay like a texture. You can stamp, you can carve, you, you know, and into those grooves you will inlay your slip. That's the difference. It's sort of scraffito upside down or reversed or, you know, <laughs> And uh, I'm going to do that today. I'm going to show you two different projects, two ways of using colored slips to do Mishima. And the first one, let me put this away, will be a bird bath, shallow bowl actually. <laughs> I sold my bird bath. I want to do one. So let's go and make a bird bath. I'm going to stamp in a slab of clay. I have a slab of clay here. Really, <laughs> you'll see it in a sec. And I'm going to stamp it with my stamps. I have made stamps. Why do I put her upside down? <laughs> These stamps I made inspired by those. Oh, I didn't take it out. I don't know where it is. I already put it away again. Um, you know, those beautiful wood carved uh, block print stamps. They are so pretty if you want to buy the real ones they are a piece of art in and of itself they are hand carved and they're expensive yeah well they're a piece of art and handmade so i thought i'd make some if you want to know how i did this let me show you a few more let me know in the comments i can show you how i make these i've made some border ones too so if you're interested in seeing how I do that, please leave me a comment. Uh, I'm going to use, I think, but you know, you never know. I usually will wing it. I'm going to use the fishy and the birdie. I'm going to stamp that into my clay. I'm going to inlay that with slip. And I'm going to use my bisque fired mold as a slump mold to create a shallow bow. So, you know, let's dive in. Here's my slab. Uh, I, I couldn't be bothered with unpacking my slab roller. It's, I, have, I have it covered for the rain and things like that. So I did this by hand with a rolling pin. Well, a little more than a quarter inch, than a centimeter. And um, this is my mold. Let's see, roughly, right? So let's take, I'm going to roughly go around it because I need to be able to overhang. And this has been setting up a little bit. So I want to get this back into the bag or in my bucket of water so I don't have to reclaim it. Here we go. I'm putting it in my water bucket. Take you 
Probably I'm indenting it a bit, yeah. Let's grab this. And now I'm just going to play with my stamps. I think I'm going to start with this one in the middle. to not get your um, slip to be scratched away later you do want some sort of a deep indent I'm trying to put it back because I need to go a little bit deeper there that's better and then oh, to let the fishes go around why not? I wonder. Four is not... I don't want four, but I don't think I can make five. One, two, three... No, I can't make five. So, um, let's see. Huh. What about three? If I put that one. See? <laughs> no planning at all. <laughs> If I put that one there, very carefully, can I then get the birdie in between? I might, I might. Let me show you a different tree that I'm going to use. Let me look it up. Where are you? Oh. I used to, uh, in a previous life, design mandalas, and I had this beautiful transparent round thing with you know the degrees of a circle on it and I transferred it to a piece of wood that I very often use in my work let me see let's put it sort of kind in the middle and then grab something this is the three division there's a five division and well very handy dandy tool So now I know approximately where to put my fish. This technique, I'm not worried about the edge of the stamp being visible. This I do want to get rid of. Pushed it in a bit too hard because we're going to be scratching away the slip anyway, so that's fine. That's the fish. Now, d does the birdie fit? Let's make soft indention first is this fun yeah i think so or the other way around no this way let's go for it maybe a little bit there no my plate is only that big right so I am pushing pretty hard. 
also because my slab has been here for 20 minutes so it's stiffened up a bit oh that's cute I did not make small ones. Maybe I'll do that and show you. Let me know if you want to. Because this is now, it's going to go over. So I have a little bit of room left, right? I think. Which one? I don't think I can push that hard after it's set up on the mold and flipped upside down. Ta da da! I have a paisley. Want, do we want a paisley? Hmm. Or another fish. Oh, no, I'm going to chop his head off. That's too far. That's not good. I don't know what to do. Oh, I think I'm going to do this. It's cut off, it's not so bad. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe we'll. <laughs> maybe that will oh, become the ring. This has to go in again. That's not good. Where are you? also offset it on the mold oh my word too much winging in it yeah, that's fine I should make another one with its opposite you see because oh I could go like that no don't want to I want fishies Let's see what happens. Hmm. I have more room here, you see that? That's funky. There it is. Let me check in the camera what this looks like for you. Yeah. Look, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Don't get dizzy. Can you see? Yes. That's what she looks like now. And now I'm going to go and grab me some slips. I'll be right back. 
Well, I got my slips. Let me show you. This will be. Can I? You know, let me do this. This from the same clay body made slip with 10% in weight Bermuda, which will end up like this. I hope. Yeah, it will. This one is a mixture of that one and another blue, which will end up like a nice turquoise. This is a mystery one. I got gifted some mason stains a while ago and there was this little plastic bag with blue and purple. And so it's a very dark, 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 dark blue. And you know, I only have this, this is all I have. Uh, I can never make it again um, when that little bit of mason stain is gone because I have no idea what's in it. And this one is the 6364 turquoise blue. They call it turquoise blue. It looks more baggy blue to me. Also at 10%. If you're interested in learning more about slip, you might want to subscribe. Something coming. Oh, just a little teaser, you know. Okay. Uh, I'm going to stir these up because I see some of them have dried a little bit. And put the camera down again and show you the next step. So here we are again. Switchery, switcheroo. There's my slab with my stamps. Now, um, of course you do not have to use four colors. But those of you who know me, <laughs> do I have to say more? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm just going for it. Um, I accidentally put a little bit too much water in this one. So this one is going to be thin. I do not have the patience to wait until it's dried again and thicker. So I'm going to put this in. Uh, a few times and it's just a matter of putting the slip into the grooves and I have not thought this through I am just putting it in there and I want those grooves to be filled up so that's one I will probably switch around I even mix them a little bit. Why not? You know, <laughs> let's make something unique. This is what it looks like now. Let me zoom you in a bit. Uh huh. Does this work? That's what it looks like now. What a mess! Oh, you gotta love it. Uh, I was thinking. You know me. <laughs> My chaotic self. Uh, did I think this through? No, probably not really. 
I wanted that slab to go over a slump, I think that's called, because this way it's a bit too small and I want the, well, the walls of the bowl to be a little bit higher. So if I throw it over this bisque mold, I can cut it to there and then I would have a little bit bigger bowl with a little bit higher walls. However, that slips wet. So if I put it on there now, it's going to stick. Probably not the worst thing because it's going to scratch away anyway, but mm -hmm. so then I thought, you know what? I probably should just put it in here. Or is this a slump? This is hump and this is slump, right? <laughs> okay. Um, but no, I want, so, you know, Long story short, I'm making my life more difficult than need be. And I am going to put it over the mold. Now, that slip needs to dry, but I don't want my clay to dry out. You can't see what I'm doing. So let me see if I can get the camera down there. Is this working? No. Hold on. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> I'm the best cameraman in the world, Steven Spielberg, eat your heart out. Um, so what I'm doing now is to prevent the clay from drying too much because it, ha it had already set up a bit. I'm lifting it and spraying underneath. So when I flip it over onto this one, that won't crack, I hope. So, yeah, this has to dry a little bit more, and then I'll be back. Okay. Ah, I'm too impatient. <laughs> I have done this technique often, but I've never done it like this with putting the, the slipped side on to a mold. Now, I know the best time to do the scratching away is when it's leather hard. If you wait, like with Scrafito, it will smear and it has to set up. So, you know, I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to flip it up here, going to attend the rim somehow, oh, I'm sorry, upside down. And um, let's explore together, shall we? <laughs> I'll zoom you in a bit. Okay, put the glasses on, here we go. Uh, yeah, let's drop it. Oh, no. Let me see, are we in the picture? We are. I think I need to move it over. I am hoping and guessing that because I'm going to scratch away anyway, this won't be a problem. <laughs> oh boy. Woo. Getting a crack here. Okay, I am now going to coach this down. And of course, I cannot see exactly where my um my my design is but you know i'm going to take off a little bit more clay it will probably maybe even stretch the design over this curve might be fun or you know <laughs> maybe not <laughs> there's no design on this it's this has already dried on me a little bit so that's also a thing and a hair let's get you out of there all right
think I'm going to cut it along the rim of that mold and then maybe add a coil of some sort. Where's my trusty rusty cheese cutter? horizontal and then twist or turn the banding wheel so I now did cut off some of the design I did yeah there's a little bit of the design there and there I will let this dry a little bit scrape it off and then reclaim this clay This looks much better to me and I will put on a coil later I think let's have this set up and when I can lift it off and do some reveal with the scratching scraping I mean uh, I'll get back it's a weird day today my contacts were bothering me uh, hardly ever happens so switched to my glasses uh, and this is an experiment I don't know what I'm blabbering about let's go turn this over and see where we are oh hello sissy are you joining us yeah she's crawling under there again uh, let's have oh, that one on that side let's see I'm picking it up with the mold flipping it over you can't see can you? I'll see it first though it's still it's stiffened up I think it can hold its shape but it's still soft where we are now uh, let me hold it for you that's what it looks like now all the slip is still there and we're going to be scratching away at that at a later stage what to do with this rim am I going to put a coil on it or am I going to I think I'm going to keep it simple I've done that before, where are you? But I'm going to have to wait. I'm going to take one of these. And let me see if it already works. Yeah, it works. I'm going to leave all those scratches in there. Can you see? I don't think you can see. I'm going to leave that in there to keep make it a little bit textured easier for the birdies to land on but it's a bit too soft so i'm going to have to wait this is going to have to dry anyway a little bit more before we can scratch away um, the slip without it smearing so yay another pause i'll be back this is now well it's not completely leather hard yet but the rim is so i'm going to do that first let me see are we yes we are <laughs> there's a birdie having fun at a banana so i'm going to scrape this and i'm going to leave that texture in there So I have a finished rim, but not too complicated. 
we like not too complicated, don't we? I think we're gonna try to scrape away some slip, but I think I need to wait a little bit longer. We'll see. Check this side. Okay, now, old fashioned Mishima, scrape away the slip you have put into your texture. I'm going to start in the middle because that will tell me if it's um, ready to go. I take a metal rib. Um, what does Tim C call it? The metal rib of death? Oh my word, I've cut myself so often on these things. Let's see. Oh, it's still smearing. I will hold it up. Can you see? It's still smearing here. So, I'm going to have to wait a little bit longer. So, it has been drying a little bit longer. Let's see. Do I need to zoom in a bit more? Maybe. Let's see what happens. Well, it's better. It's better. Hey, Brian. How are you? I am good. I was running errands and then I said, maybe I just stopped. Told you this was a weird day. <laughs> but, you know, it's all good. Let me show you close up what I have done so far. I have to find the spot. Look, the birdie is coming out. So I'm going to be scratching away. Oops, what am I doing? Let me see if I can get you. Oh, this is going to be one weird video, people. Uh, why am I always turning things the wrong way around? Do you do that? I always do that. So, there we go. And I'm going to be scratching a little bit. This is how I learned from old books on pottery and old videos. Or actually DVDs that I bought on how to do this. Mishima thing. And you know, this... Scratching away, or yeah, scratching, right? It is oddly satisfying, I can tell you. Now, right here, you can see it very well because that's a very dark slip. The turquoise that I have in here as a slip, it's not too pronounced or too too visible but of course it will after it's fired and glazed it's so 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 satisfying it's like the have you seen my video about bob turtle oh on which i have some news too by the way the, the, the pulling away of stencils and masks is also so satisfying. That's the best part. That's the same with this. I 
save those little thingies these um i once tried to put uh, uh push them or roll them into a wet slab and the effect was nice but well for me not nice enough to um repeat i now keep these in a box and i sort of kind of sort them by color i have all blues and blues and turquoise here i have one with blues and greens i have one with brown and black and one with reds and yellows and i keep those and from those because i do so much graffito i will make new slip in the darkest color so don't, i don't have to throw it away that's a waste. Can you tell where this is going? Oh, I have to watch what I'm doing. Yeah, there we go. I hope you can see. And it's a bit, you know, it's a little bit more rustic. It's not very precise. And you know me if you've been watching my channel thank you for that by the way <laughs> um i don't always go for precise hardly ever go for precise i like things to have a rhythm a little movement now when i'm doing the sides i'm left-handed so i have to do it on this side i can't not do it like that but do um, uh, put your other hand there for support because this is dry leather hard. I could even have waited a little bit longer, I think. But it's, you know, just to be on the safe side. And I am using this curve to get into that curve over there. Going quiet again. Mm -hmm. oh, this is so nice. I'm just enjoying this for the moment, okay? You see me turning my rib? Did you see me do that? do it again I'm just fitting the curve into this curve right there it doesn't fit so I turn it a little bit but no, it doesn't fit and now it does easier to see if you're done with darker slips so if you want to try this and it's your first time maybe do that first hey birdie oh yeah there's one eating from the banana
everywhere. Yeah, some there. Oops. Be careful. Tell everybody support your work and then don't do it. Of course. See, there's a little bit there. I don't know if you can tell. Okay, I'm going to let this dry once more a little bit further. And because the clay gets a little bit whiter as it dries. There's a scratch I don't want. That's what sometimes happens. You dig in too much. Uh, yeah, the clay will get whiter while, when it's drying. And I can brush out the little pieces that are have fallen in there. And then, you know, it's the last little bit of fiddling with it. Oh, this was actually done too soon. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, here we go. Isn't it nice? I like it. I know it's not very visible yet because of the lighter color of, of slip, but it will be. It will be. All right, let me show you with what I mean, what I meant with these little thingies. I mean, it's no rocket science, right? Oh, it's an old ice cream jar. Oh no, a salad jar. Look how much I have from my latest mugs that I have made. And this goes in there too. I let it dry. And this I can use to make the, oops, that's something else. <laughs> and this I can easily use to make the darkest blue. Look how much. Yes, let's be frugal and not waste clay. <laughs> okay, a little recap. It's so difficult to see, but you, this time you are going to have to wait until it's fired. I, um, I didn't prepare beforehand on this video. Let me show you going to come close what I would do differently next time is well there are some oh look like this one there are some spots like this one where the slip did not fill the texture completely now, it's not a problem the color is still there it will show up after it's fired but some of them are pretty deep and it's going to get a transparent glaze on the inside and that gets milky when it's thick so that might happen but <laughs> from here in the viewer it looks just gray and maybe that is what it looks like to you so yeah well sorry no preparation impromptu this is what you get 